in English, uh, and we'll move directly to the first item in the program. Uh, it's a pl big pleasure to introduce our first guest today, uh, Gerd Mack. Uh, Gerd Mack is one of Europe's most popular historians, uh, whether he writes about the countryside in Europe, uh, about his home city, Amsterdam, the history of his father uh, as a personal perspective of Europe, or his new book uh, about, a, it's a family chronicle about the Six family uh, in, in Amsterdam. He knows what both history uh, as an as an academia uh, is about and what culture is about, which is storytelling. Many of you read his book about Europe and his travels through Europe and the 20th century, and some of you saw him probably also on TV. Get Mark, come up here uh, and say hello. Where are you, Gerd? Uh, oh, there you Martin. are. Okay, yes. good. So <laughs> welcome and give Gerd Mark a big hand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So Copenhagen, you know Thank Danes, you. especially Copenhageners, have a massive inferiority complex uh, oh, when, Dutch, when we meet the Dutch. The because Dutch, yeah, but the Dutch have that too. No, but you the don't. They, they shout. They yes, they yeah, shout but we, we really do, because <laughs> when we, we visit Amsterdam, we know this is, this is what Copenhagen would be if it was a real oh, no, city. don't. Never yeah. do that. <laughs> we have a lot of problems, don't yeah. we? But and Just like we have the problem of Venice. You, you, this is a fantastic city, Copenhagen. But yeah, yeah. this yeah. is another story. It's, it's yeah. very nice to <laughs> say that. You, you, you wrote, uh, I think, 10 years ago about this whole subject that we're talking about today, that you're starting to feel, despite all the intensive communication between us in Europe, Europe actually enjoyed a greater cultural unity in the years before the First World War than it does today. Really? And why? Um, yes. Well, you can say in the 19th century, there was a uh, in, in, in stark feeling of community because it was an, the culture was a thing for the elite. And uh, I think something... Uh, Virginia Woolf wrote fantastic ones about that, about the change of the culture somewhere in December uh, 1907. She said the world is changing, the cultural world. And she, she, there was, was all kinds of obscene remarks around that, but in fact she was right because uh, somewhere around the um, around 1900, it, the culture became also mass culture of the masses and. Mm -hmm. Uh, that opened the societies, uh, but in the same time it was a way of the the closing the societies because culture was also a vehicle for nationalism, very stark in the in the thirties. Mm. <laughs> so it is the answer is mixed. Yes, but it's, it seems strange that that you should make that point because we have now spent decades, you know, trying to integrate both politically and culturally. And you still feel that we we know less about each other than we did before. We know more, and we know less. Mm. Yes, uh, and especially now, uh, the, uh, yeah. How do we know less? I think uh, we know less, especially in the internet time, uh, because internet has the tendency to create uh, its own communities, mm. and that can be. Uh, communities of pet lovers or something like that, but it is uh, can uh, you see it often that people can find in internet only news they like to hear. Yes. And in the same way, uh, you can also uh, separate yourself totally from, uh, let's say, from international news and only look at national news or even local news. So you can create better than. <coughs> Than, than ever your own artificial world. Right, right. And that, that, so internet brings us together, sometimes also on a problematic way, like you had in Denmark this cartoon uh, riot, so it was a, a typical uh, yeah, internet riot because it took a cultural phenomenon, mm. Danish can, of you can a cartoon, a Northern European phenomenon, and in Euro Northern European phenomenon it was not dangerous at all, but in Pakistan or Af Afghanistan, yes. it was like a hand grenade. Yes. Yes. And it was just because internet gave 
this, this cultural phenomenon in a totally other context. So it brings us together on a good way, but sometimes on a bad way, but it separates us too. Right. And then when we look at Europe, uh, is it something, I think it was you who said uh, once, it was, it was you who said once, that, uh, that at when, when we think of ourselves as European, historically and culturally and so on, we tend to project our own national vision yeah. and, and, and confuse it with what we think is Europe. Can you give an example or two about this? You see it everywhere. Yeah. I think we judge, for instance. We have always an idea Europe is in fact the Netherlands with the Hague mm. and uh, rather orderly and uh, now a little bit like the Danish. We are in that way totally the same. Uh, the Germans have already a little bit of different idea about Europe. But the French, uh, uh, they have, uh, uh, yeah, they have, they are more. Uh, French is an old monarchy, it mm. is republic, former or republican. But they are still thinking in rather uh, kind of hi hierarchy. Uh, uh, Ita Italy, um, the attitude of the Italians, uh, uh, um, the, the thinking about the state, and in Spain is the same. Is the state is not protecting them. Mm. It is always something uh, you have to keep away, uh, you have to, to keep a little bit away from the state. Yes. While we, Northern Europeans, are used to rather well so, ruled So, so we, we tend to think that Europe we is the same as, our, our, as ourselves, just a little bigger. Oh yes, yeah. uh, but everybody has the same. Uh, in Eastern Europe, for yeah. instance, the Eastern Europeans have, after so many decades of uh, dictatorships and communism, they have a very complicated relation to the state, in fact, yes. and don't trust the state yes. very much. Yes. Uh, so their attitude to the state uh, is also their attitude to Brussels a bit. Where, where, where does it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very complicated and very different. Right. So where does culture enter the frame here? I mean, because what you're talking about here is is uh, historical experience uh, and also cultural and political experience, but but how how much does culture matter in this in this piece of of, of uh, math that we are talking about here? Is is, po is, politi is politics the the sum really as an historian? And when you look at Europe, the sum of geopolitical and uh, and economical interests. Uh, and if culture matters, how much is it reflected? Without culture, it is nothing. What uh, does that mean? I think culture is not uh, something extra. No, culture is the basic of everything. What does that mean? Uh, because uh, let's let's talk about a country. Uh, a, a country uh, like Benedict Anderson, his famous definition was uh, a, a country uh, is, uh, is is a uh, imaginated community. Mm. And uh, there are all, ki all kinds of imaginated communities. And uh, Europe becomes slowly, because of the European Union, but it is much wider than the European Union, uh, becomes also slowly, under more by more and more people, also a kind of imaginated continent. But it takes generations, generations. Look at the United States of America. The Americans have also thought for now, decades and decades, they were only living in Texas and nothing else. Uh, and slowly on, I think, in, in the 30s, under Roosevelt, slowly on, it became a little bit an imaginated right. country. Right. Europe so, so what the you same. Saying, Euro Europe but, is, is but not... Is for not this imagination, yes. for the imagination is, uh, is all kinds of culture is, is, is the, the main thing, mm. because... Uh, literature, but ook also a shared history, uh, also a lot of small uh, symbols, not only a monarchy, but for instance, I think in my own country, a crazy example, but for decades we had yellow trains. Mm. That was part of the Dutch culture. I think in Denmark you have the same thing. Yeah. This, that, that, that is all part of the imaginated uh, community we call a national state. And I think the big problem is now that in, in Europe, we have to build also together an imaginated community. And um, uh, it is all the time now a friction of culture. Sometimes 
we have something in common, but yeah. sometimes not. Uh, so this, the struggle within Europe is a deep st a struggle between cultures. But could you argue that this is a weakness and a strength at the same time? Oh, yes. Because the, weak, the we weakness is obvious to a historian, I, I would say. I mean, it, it, oh, yeah. it, it can lead to war. Uh, and the strength is about what? Uh, the strength is that, that all those differences gave also Europe an enormous, it, it was a very dynamic continent. You can say from the 14th century already. Uh, a fantastic example is always that the, the emperor of China, somewhere in the middle of the 15th century, was also doing very well with all kinds of explorations and expeditions, even to America. And suddenly the new emperor decided to stop it. Mm. And China became, there was no, the, 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 yeah, it stopped really. So the whole development of China was blocked for centuries. Uh, in Europe, something like that happened when Columbus went, he worked first for the, um, for the king of uh, France and the king of France blocked also the, his ideas about expeditions to America and so on and so on. And for Columbus it was very easy, he went to the king of Spain mm. and a half year later he had a new expedition and that was in fact, that, is the, that was the good thing of all these different countries, they were all in, 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 in kind of struggle with each other, but it gave also, uh, it gave an enormous yeah. dynamic uh, to this very strange continent of Europe. Right. But you said it, the risk was also wars and not only that, uh, the, the things we, we have now, uh, we have really uh, at the moment enormous problems. I think we don't have one crisis, but we have four, five, six crises because uh, the, the, the cooperation is uh, going worse and worse and we are struggling yes. not only with our cultures in the uh, yeah in, in when you talk about art or small the small sense of the world mm -hmm. but also uh, with our cultures when you yeah when you talk of about culture as, as a kind of uh, yeah as a, as, as a kind of habits we have uh, in, the, in the broad sense of the world so and that is that is and my feeling is that that is the big problem. Right. And C could you argue now that we have to use yeah, culture yeah, could, to yeah, solve it? Right. Could you argue that because culture is so difficult to to to, to de define really, there is a fight, you know, historically over the world, and and it's so much associated to the political realities of time. Culture today is more and more uh, uh, defined as, as you say, the habits and norms of a specific group. Yeah a language that nobody else but that group understands and that culture in effect, one culture is in effect incompatible to another country, uh, culture. Uh, so we have all these cultures, you know, uh, maybe coexisting but they are separated and there is of course a political, a political interest in defining culture that way and this is the, the, wa the way we are, we are going right now. And defining, the first thing is of course, do you accept that cultures cannot uh, uh, go together and cannot mix with yes. each other and cannot be but this, inspired. But this seems to be the, 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 the discussion of, of, of the, the time. Media, yes, yes. No, I, I think the first thing is, is not true, not true at all. Uh, when I look at my own country uh, um, and uh, the history, uh, like a, a typical Dutch national painter as Rembrandt, in reality, he was not such a lonely genius at all. He was looking all the time to Italian and German painters and, and his, his library was full, really full with books about uh, uh, Italian masters and he was enormously influenced by Raphael. Uh, and the music, uh, especially the music, everybody was influenced by everybody. Are you saying that Rembrandt was a quite mediocre uh no, Artist, uh, no, he was not a mediocre <laughs> artist, but he took just like Shakespeare. He was not a lonely genius. He was not. No, he he mm. just has, like Shakespeare. He took his examples and uh, his ideas from everywhere yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Music exactly the same. So, all those great artists, and you can go on and on. You was talking just about Anderson. Uh, yeah. Anderson, he did the same, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, talking about culture is for. Uh, a great part talking about European culture, if you like it or not. Right. So, so at, at, 
I think, yeah, uh, it is, it, you cannot say, let's uh, look at our own culture yeah. and let's what, see how we can combine it. No, what, what reality is our own country, is, uh, culture is often European culture. Why, 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 why do you think it's, uh, why, why has this, uh, why has this happened? Because it, we, it is politicians, and it's really politicians from right to left, who are y talking about culture as it's a separate uh, incompatible Honestly, phenomena. because a lot Why of do politicians do that? I, I, uh, we that's a problem everywhere with politicians. They don't know anything about culture and cultural life and working and culture. <laughs> right, okay, that's, right. That, that's okay. really the reality. But why, yeah, but okay. bureaucrats do the same, right. honestly. Yeah. But why, why yeah. is it, because I mean, it, what is it that is driving politicians of Europe today who see culture that way, you know, except from because reading the books and going Europe to Europe is opera. poisoned by populism, yeah. yes. But what is it driving? Just a few days. What is it driving emotion in this? Is it is it uh, what is it uh, fear or no, what fear and and that is a very natural uh, yeah. attitude and I can understand that very well yeah. for a politician. You want to survive as a politician, yeah. and I think every politician has in his heart two voices. I want to survive as a politician, mm. and on the other hand, I have also when I started this whole career, I had some ideas. I wanted to do something, yeah. and. Uh, uh, sometimes, especially now, I think a lot of politicians uh, don't dare to follow this last voice again, the first voice they heard. Mm. And uh, what we really need everywhere is at the moment politicians who not only follow the, 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 their, their voters, which you have to do, but also try to convince their voters to take another attitude. Right. The, the real statesmen and statesmen are doing that. And that is also in, and I think uh, culture is very important to influence people, to create this, yeah, this, this imagination. How do, the, the, the also the, the, what you, the, the promise of Europe is also very cultural, but it's also important for the politicians to bring right. them back to their old feelings. If, if, if politics, and culture is not at all separated. It, culture, as you say, is is the basis. Is yeah. is, is the ground floor. Yeah. I th you said on the phone when we spoke uh, a few days ago that 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 culture and politics have the same core feeling, emotion in the, in their core feeling in their in their lang in the, its language. It's about both. It's about yeah. I emotion. I it's think, it's yeah. not rational. I, I think politics and cultural. Stuff is the same. I think a good politician has always a feeling for uh, uh, culture uh, and all kinds of culture uh, because that is the uh, yeah that 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 tells something how society is and perhaps even what the future is and uh, so in that way I think uh, politicians can be inspired a lot and you see also the the great statesmen and women, uh, statesmen and stateswomen, were always involved uh, in, uh, in, 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 in cultural stuff. They were often listening. Uh, but at the other hand, when you look at the, uh, at the, in, in the practice, I think uh, we can, as, as I'm part of the cultural field, uh, what politicians decide, decide or not, we will go on. Yeah. In, in our own way, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, money or not, yeah. we can go on and we shall go on. Why do you think then uh, it seems like that it's the political fringes, both in your country and our country and the rest of Europe, that dominates the cultural discussions? When the, the centre-right and the centre-left seem to appeal not to emotion but to rational thoughts about economy and so on. Yeah. You, you're totally right. It is a part of the problem, and I think uh, uh, the, the indeed. I a few days ago, early in the morning, I woke up and I thought, "Let's be right-wing <laughs> nationalist." Today, uh, more today, for the rest of uh, your life. Perhaps life. tomorrow too. Yeah. And it was so easy. It yeah. was so fantastic. It was suddenly a lot of problems were, were solved just because I. I, it wasn't necessary to look at them anymore. They were not existing anymore. So uh, there were a few things which disturbed me, a kind of old morality, ideas about enlightenment and Christianity, 
uh, and it was also, I must say, history. Mm. A history of my family, uh, when you look at the immigrants, because sometimes my family life, they were also refugees, so, uh, but also a history in general. And uh, I think that is the, the, that is the, I think that it is important that politicians of the middle accept more uh, the, this, this chaos, this, this, this dilemma, uh, speak open about it. Uh, uh, because it is also for uh, uh, an, an, an decent left wing, right wing, middle of the road politician, it is very easy and also a way of simplification to think only uh, about figures. Right. And to think only about business, and only politics. Uh, then, then you avoid also, mm. just like me, that early morning, the real problems of mm. this suffering world in Europe too. Are, are you saying that politics without culture is just trade and figures? Uh, it is trade figures, and it is empty, mm. and it will be punished by the voters because voters are not crazy, and citizens are not crazy. They feel it, they feel it, they see it. Yeah. So uh, 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 you will lose as a politician mm. at the end. Yeah. Even, look, look at, uh, even look at these Nazis and fascists, yeah. uh, uh, terrible, but they were in that their time very popular and they know very well how important yeah. it was to but this is the message but Okay, so it. now maybe you looked, now we are okay, maybe we have a, to, to sum up, we have a very disturbing point of view here, uh, or conclusion, that, that, w that, you know, fringe politicians, both to the left and to the right, feel natural about talking about culture. Center-right or center-left yeah. politicians, they, they don't feel natural about talking about culture. You don't really believe them when they think, say that culture is important. As a politician, but maybe as a private person, they, they love culture. So, but when they talk about culture publicly, people tend not to believe them at all. And I have the, fe the feeling that I al always worry a bit when a politician talks about oh, culture. I share your feelings. I, I think, maybe w what is he up to? Why is he talking about culture? Because but he should, are you saying he should talk about culture? No, I say don't. They, they have to listen to culture and to, to keep their eyes open. That is mm. what I ask from, from politicians. But when politicians are talking too much about culture, especially in the way the mm. French are doing nowadays, they want to rule the country. Yeah, and right. they want... Uh, culture has, is always, the whole cultural field, uh, when it is good, is always unexpected. It, it, uh, it creates confusion, and mm. confusion, and this confusion is, it, it create, creates also empathy. Empathy is very important in those days. And when a politician talks too much about culture, especially when, when he wants to rule culture, mm. it is always to cut off these tendencies. Mm. So. Uh, it is the same when politicians are talking too much about history and we have uh, to reorganize nice history and so on. Uh, sometimes you have to do it. In mm. the Netherlands we had to do it too because the, uh, it was really, really chaos in the, in the education. Yeah. But uh, I say keep distance, keep distance. Let the field has to do it. It's, uh, well, I think it's a problem when politicians talk too much, period, about anything, really. Uh, just the last question, wh when we're talking about the subject here and the Cultural Institute of Denmark, and you have similar th things in, in, in the Netherlands, also, does it make sense when the foreign ministry, the foreign mi ministry uh, tends to focus solely on trade? and not so much about culture. Could the cultural ministry say, let's leave that to the Ministry of Culture, let's leave that to the artists and so on, let's leave that to the grassroots, we don't it have to really... I think a foreign minister has always, we have, just like we, we have, you have also embassies and so on and so on. So it, it, I think uh, the, the exchange of cultures and the, uh, uh, and the ex it is always a part of foreign, foreign policy. Uh, uh, and not only to sell the country, but also to create more understanding. And that is not a platitude, it is a reality. So it is uh, working on long term, but for instance, I see it in the literary field. You have it also in Denmark. There is in the de in the we have an institution who organizes all kinds of uh, subsidized translation. It is when you look at the enormous amount of money spent in, uh, on other projects, 
it is in fact not much money, mm. and it is it, it works like hell. It is fantastic, mm. and um, uh, because then uh, we we are we both we are the, the le we have a problem of a language which most people in the world are not under as understand. But through such an institution, you can. Yeah, you, you tell the story of your country and uh, people understand you a little bit. And it's, it is the same with other uh, art. So it, it, I talked in the beginning about we have to develop, especially in Europe, this, this, f this feeling of a common uh, uh, imagination, a c an imaginated community. And I think it is not only uh, something next to the other task of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it is one of the central tasks, I think, in, in your foreign policy to work on this common, imaginated community. So culture is uh, unavoidable. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming to Copenhagen. Yeah. Give Gerd Marga a big hand. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.